Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you some of the major news developments from across the globe. We begin with an update on the novel coronavirus pandemic. The number of cases has crossed a million across the world. Of these, over 750,000 are still active and more than 53,000 people have died. The United States has a quarter of the world's cases, followed by Italy and Spain, which are the other countries with over 100,000 cases each. The United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, or the DESA, has estimated that the global economy could decline by 1% in the year 2020. This is because of the pandemic. It also added that further decline may be likely if the lockdowns and restriction of movement continues without adequate fiscal support. Massive loss of jobs is also being reported across the world. In the United States, for instance, over 6.6 .6 million people filed for unemployment claims last week. Government websites to help people register for unemployment support have reportedly crashed in several US states already with increasing number of users. Independent estimates have reported that the US alone has over 67 million workers who are at risk of layoffs because of the economic hit caused by the outbreak, of which at least 47 million jobs are set to vanish over the next few months a situation that would be worse than the Great Depression itself. In Spain, where the spread of the virus is rivaling that of Italy, 6.65 million people have been unemployed and have requested assistance from the government so far. Even countries that are not that terribly hit by the pandemic are said to suffer. India, where the number of reported cases is around 2,400 so far, has seen the unemployment rate jump by 1.5% points which translates to anywhere between 6 to 8 million jobs lost in the span of just a few weeks in the last quarter alone. World over, countries are bracing for the massive surge of unemployment that the crisis could cost. People in different countries around the world are facing a major threat to their housing as well in the middle of the pandemic. In Australia, hundreds of tenants have complained of being coerced into paying their rents. Landlords have reportedly been taking up heavy-handed measures by pushing tenants to pay their rent for March through various wage assistance measures that the Gauss state and the federal government have enacted. This is despite sanctions that could arise for violating eviction and rent freeze across the country. Many tenants have been asked to evict the flats therein, while their corporate landlords have taken measures of lobbying against the restrictions that have been imposed by different governments to protect tenants during the pandemic. Similarly, in South Africa, Azania, an informal shack dwelling settlement of Cato Maynard Durban, was attacked by the Ethiopian municipality authorities on Thursday. 15 shacks were demolished, leaving several people homeless at a time when the lockdown has been imposed by the South African government and people have been ordered to stay home. Many shack dwellers were also injured in the attack. A private security agency, Calvin Security, was used by the municipality for the demolitions on Thursday. The army and the police, which had been ordered to assist in the implementation of the lockdown, were also involved in the illegal evictions. This is not the first eviction during the lockdown period. The South African government had ordered a moratorium on evictions during the lockdown period under enormous pressure from social justice organizations and the country's largest shack dwellers movement, Aphal Ali Basir Majandolu. Despite this, evictions and shack demolitions have been reported across the country. In our In Focus segment, we bring you a video feature on the legacy of the US war in Iraq. The US recently redeployed its soldiers from three bases in the country to two other bases.
In our next story, earlier this week, the Indian government announced a number of amendments to Jammu and Kashmir's domicile laws. The former state of Jammu and Kashmir had its constitutionally guaranteed autonomy revoked by the Narendra Modi government and got bifurcated into two union territories that directly command the administration of the central government. The rump entity of Jammu and Kashmir after bifurcation continued to enjoy some limited special status and retained some of its earlier domicile laws. These domicile laws regulate settlement and residency. The earlier laws were designed to prevent any demographic changes to the state after it joined India. They blocked migrants from other parts of the country, other parts of the country from becoming permanent residents or being domiciled in the state. They also prevented property acquisition by outsiders. The latest amendments are set to change that. The amendments will allow any person who has lived in the newly created union territory for about 15 years, including the children of central government employees to be domiciled if their parents have resided in the state for at least 10 years. The amendment would also deem any person registered by the Relief and Rehabilitation Commissioner migrants as a Kashmiri migrant, which is a status given to those displaced because of the violence as a domiciled person. The new changes also take out quotas for domiciled persons and limit it to the lowest ranks of the bureaucracy, opening up the higher bureaucratic posts to anyone from the mainland of the country. Both pro-establishment and secessionist political movements have criticized the BJP government for making pathways to the colonization in the state. That's all we have in this episode of the International Daily Roundup. To know more about these stories, visit our website peoplesdispatch.org and follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. Thanks for watching. Yeah, cantar, que vamos a triunfar.